Florida search crews have pulled the remains of four more people from the Surfside condo collapse, bringing the confirmed death toll to 32. Teams have been working around the clock, only stopping for lightning as required by state law and for Sunday's demolition of the remaining structure. Officials say of the 32 dead, 26 people have been identified. 113 people remain unaccounted for, 70 of whom were confirmed to be in the building at the time of the collapse. Every single life that has been lost is a beloved family friend, a best friend, someone's child or parent or niece or cousin or grandparent, and we know that waiting for news is unbearable. The waiting, the waiting, and the waiting is unbearable. And so <clears throat> receiving that your loved one is gone is also unbearable. Please continue to hold all of the families in your hands and your hearts and in your prayers during this unimaginably difficult time. Joining us with the latest about the search efforts is Joan Murray. She's a reporter with our CBS station in Miami, WFOR. Hi, Joan. So the weather is rapidly deteriorating as Tropical Storm Elsa approaches Florida. What is the safety plan for crews and what are the biggest challenges they face in regard to the weather? Good afternoon, Tanya. Well, they have safety crews on site at the pile and they constantly monitor the weather. If wind speed becomes dangerous, they will pull those crews from the pile. As you have said, they are working round the clock 24 seven. The only time that these crews have been off the pile is when they had the demolition over the weekend and also when there was a lightning fear. But we have seen a lot of video of these crews continuing to work even when debris was blowing around. We have had a lot of rain over the 13 days of this disaster, and they continue working through the rain. But there is, I did ask one of the rescuers, you know, do you have a certain wind speed? And they said, no, it is determined at the time whether it, it just feels unsafe enough that they will pull those crews. So at this point, work is going on. As you know, the storm is battering Key West area. We are getting some remnants of Elsa up here um, in, Miami-Dade County, but it is not to the degree that they have had to pull the crews from the debris field. And Joan, officials announced, as you know, that there are still 113 people unaccounted for. 70 of those have confirmed to have been in the building. What's the latest on the search for these individuals? And can you explain how they are determining who was in the building at the time of the collapse? I'll take the second part of your question first, and that is how did they determine? When this disaster happened, you had Miami-Dade detectives and other people working on trying to get a list together. Family members and friends would report, we believe that a loved one was in the building at the time. They said the number has fluctuated because over the course of the 13 days, as detectives would do follow-up phone calls with these family members or with friends, they would find that a person that they believe might have been in the building with that loved one was accounted for. So the number has fluctuated. I remember in the beginning they were saying missing was over 150. That number has come down over the last 13 days. There was a bit of disappointing news this morning when the fire chief said that they are now finding these pockets they believe existed where it was possible that somebody could have been trapped all this time and possibly could still be alive. But they said they are disappointed that when they find these pockets or deep spaces now in the rubble that they are able to access since they brought down the rest of that unstable structure, they say that they are disappointed that they are not finding people in those areas. So at this point, again, as of noon today, Eastern time, 32 victims identified, 113 missing. Sadly, today also we have some funerals taking place. Uh, the Guar family that many people may have heard about, that was a mother and father and two young daughters who were found in the rubble mm. last week. They are being buried today, uh, this afternoon. There's a Catholic church near here, St. Joseph's Catholic Church. Also, we understand today that a couple uh, who had lived in Australia 20 years, Zvi and Ingrid Ainsworth are being buried in New York. So just a sad day 
overall. But that work continues here at the pile, weather, um, you know, lightning notwithstanding. Oh, it's just heartbreaking. Every hour, every day seems to bring uh, more heartbreaking news. Um, so, Joan, doing, during this morning's press conference, officials mentioned that they are looking into the safety of the condo's sister building and also advising other building owners in the area to do the same. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah. So uh, there are three Champlain Towers. You have the South, which we are at, and then you have the North Tower, which is a duplicate building in design and everything just north of here. That building opened uh, a year later after the South Tower. Uh, there is also an East Building, but that was a totally different design. So right now the East Building isn't under scrutiny. But this North Building, because it is a duplicate of the South Building, there is an investigation going on into the state of that building. The mayor of Surfside said earlier today that they are taking a deep dive now, looking into all the documents, you know, doing a, a deep examination of that building to see if there are similar problems. Now, we know at this point, According to published reports, it has been well documented that the South Tower had a cascade of problems. And uh, though this investigation is going to take months, if not years, there are some, I guess, red flags, you might call them, that have been identified that they believe may have contributed to this collapse. Again, we don't have the, the final word on what happened, but it is well documented that they had concrete, failing concrete problems. They had water intrusion, and then there is a new report out that perhaps the base of the building wasn't properly reinforced with steel. So all that, they're taking all that information and, of course, looking now at that North Tower to see if there are similar problems. Engineers have been in, and the mayor gave his pledge today that they are going to look very deeply to make sure that that building doesn't come down as the South Tower did. And as we know, there has been a voluntary evacuation at that North Tower. Some people have taken advantage of, but at this point, it is still voluntary, and there are still people living in that building. Joan Murray with WFOR from Miami in Surfside, Florida. Thank you so much.